since the previous video, we had a chance to learn about entrops in general and external entrops on Prude B specifically. And in this video, we carry on with our mission. And to put it together, there are two types of entrops on Prude B. And these are the edge triggered entropt we've seen previously on RB0, RB1, and RB2. And you should know that these pins trigger an entropt either on the rising edge or the falling edge, depending on how you configure them. And if you missed my previous video on entropt, the link is given below. And there is the port B entropt on a change, or for short, IOC. And this entropt is attached to four pins, RB4, RB5, RB6, and RB7. And they all share the same flag bit. Meaning, if any of these four pins has changed the state either from high to low or low to high, the entropt fires and the flag bit is set. This flag bit is called RBIF and is located inside in the count register. And to enable this interrupt, we set RBIE and intercount register to 1. And here is an animation to make it clear. Suppose that these four pins are made input and initially connected to their volt. If any of these pins, say RB7, is now connected to 5 volts or high state, then port B interrupt is triggered and RBIF is set. According to the previous video, or according to the data sheet, once we handle the entropt, we have to clear RBIF, so we don't get false entrops. So we handled the entropt, cleared RBIF, and suddenly RB4 changed the state from low to high. Then the entropt is triggered again and RBIF is set. So we handle the entropt once again and clear RBIF. So here is a recap. Port B on a change entropt has one entropt flag bit shared by all the entropt pins. Unlike the external entrops we've seen in the last video, where every pin has its own flag bit. Another important thing is that you cannot select when the entropt is triggered. In other words, the entropt is fired after any pin changes the state from high to low, low to high. And before we leave the slides, there is a couple of key notes. First, if any of these four pins is configured to be output, it's excluded from the entropt on a change comparison, and this pin no longer can fire an entropt. Secondly, and this one is a life savior. In the ISR where you're handling port B entropt, you should first read port B register, then clear the flag bit to end the mismatch condition. Simply, if you just clear the flag bit without reading board B register, the flag is set again and again even if there were no changes on any of these pins, and you end up getting stuck in the ISR forever. Okay guys, we move on to the circuit for this video. Let's find out what the circuit is doing. We have four switches connected to pins RB4 to RB7 which makes sense since we're focused on these pins. Then we have four LEDs connected to pins RB0 to RB3, and the state of these switches is reflected on the four LEDs we have. Initially, all the switches are open, so pins RB4 to RB7 are effectively connected to VCCs through pull-up resistors. And if I close the switch connected to RB4, then effectively this pin is connected to ground and the LED connected to RB0 turns off. And the same goes for the other switches here. So we turn it off all the LEDs and if we open any of these switches, then the corresponding LED turns on again. And this time we open MPLAB IDE and start writing code for this project. Start a new project as usual and copy the configuration bits. I should stop seeing that every time we start a project, okay? In the main function, we have the 4 bit support B input and the low 4 bits output, so we write to port B all at once. And you can do something like this. 
Port B equals OX F0. The OX means it's a hexadecimal number and OX F0 in binary will evaluate this. 11110000. The most significant four bits are ones and the least significant four bits are zeros. Then we set port B initially to zero and this line puts the zero volt on the lower four bits only. As I said, there is nothing such as writing to an input pin here. We start setting the bits for port B on a change in drop. We set our BIE bit in intercon to 1 and of course don't forget to set the GIE bit in intercon register. So let's go back to the simulation and there is one thing I forgot to connect in this circuit. Guess what? I did not add the pull-up resistors here, but luckily we have them already built in inside the port B, so let's go and activate them. So these pull-ups are enabled by clearing RBPU bit inside into control register. So here we go and set it to zero, and we write the infinite while loop. And it seems a little bit inconvenient since we're not writing anything inside of this loop, but it's very important to add it. So we have the project working. And we're done with the main function, so let's jump into the ISR. First, we make sure that it would be on a change in drop that made the microcontroller jump to the ISR by checking the flag bit. If it is, go inside. And here is a devilish trick. We shift the upper four bits in port B four times to the right so they become the lower four bits in port B and appear on the LEDs connected to these pins. Look at the animation here to have a good idea on what this line is doing. This innocent line is very common in embedded C and if it's the first time you come across something like this, the greater than greater than operator is the shift right operator in C and whatever integer comes after it is the amount of shifting we apply to the left operand or board B in this case. So again we shifted the bits in board B four times to the right and put the result inside board B again using the equal sign here. Finally we clear our BIF bit and we're done. If you made it to the end of the video, give it thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video on interfacing keypads. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.